there's a lot of symbols uh, when I research about this topic I come up with uh, I see some of these symbols with flower of life fruit of life mm -hmm. can you explain the meaning of these symbols? yeah um well the flower of life is based upon the the symmetry of the hexagon and the sixfold uh, division of a circle and we can look at some graphics in a minute here but it's an interesting idea that whenever you have um, a circle and you draw a circle you will have the circumference and you will have the radius of the circle okay any circle it doesn't matter what size it's just within, inherent within the nature of geometry that when you draw that circle you then take that same radius and you step around the circumference it will go exactly six times exactly six times right you can then develop from their whole um, set of patterns which are based on the sixfold division of a circle and you find that very common in crystalline um, geometry um, you find you know six petals uh, um, like the lilies, for example, have, are based on the hexagonal geometry, whereas the roses are based on pentagonal geometry. Um, the flower of life is simply a development based on that sixfold geometry. And uh, I think what you could say is that, you know, the sixfold, actually, to me, the more the geometry of life is the, the fivefold geometry. Sixfold geometry we find more in the realm of matter, inanimate matter, crystals, and so on. Likewise, um, octagonal geometry. Once we get into the pentagonal geometry, that, that's where we generally will find, um, you know, the patterns of life. Um, you know, because, the, for example, the divine section or divine proportion or golden section is based upon pentagonal geometry. And... Um, a lot of living things manifest the geometry that we find in in the fivefold division of a circle, and we can, of course, in a minute look at um, how we actually create the flower of life, mm -hmm. and it <clears throat> it's a very straightforward process, and it all just involves setting out one circle, marking off the circumference, those six points. And then using those to generate more circles, all of the same size as the original circle. So we'll have some slides we can look at to show that. And as a symbol, does it mean anything? Well, you know, to me, it's just it's such a fundamental, um, it's a fundamental way of geometrically organizing things. That to me, it, it's you know intrinsic. Um, an intrinsic part of the structure of the material world, if nothing else. It's also, you know, the geometry of, you know, if you know the chakras, mm -hmm. um, you know, the chakras each have geometric representations. Um, is it the Anahata chakra that is the um, sixfold geometry? So there's a, there's a, a flower of life pattern within that. Um, and when we go through the, the diagrams here, we can see the how it is the outcome of this very simple straightforward geometric process like to get the flower of life all we need is the sixfold division of a circle which is very easy to do mm -hmm. to get the pentagonal geometry is more complicated okay so here we have a, a diagram um, showing the the seven chakras and you see the heart chakra is the anahata chakra if we zoom in on that anahata chakra we should be able to see the geometry of it. Yeah, here we go. You see there's 12 petals and it's all based on the six-fold division of the circle. And that's what I was saying. If you take the radius of this circle, it'll step off exactly six times around. And then by a very simple geometric, one more geometric step, you can subdivide that to get one-twelfth of the circle. And then that gives us the model of the, our standard clock in the wall of 12 hours. It also gives us the model of the great year, which is the 12 zodiacal signs representing a full processional cycle of 25,920 years. Um, and if we go to the money, yeah, so here's an, a larger version of that. 
<clears throat> with various symbolism. And here's the Manipura chakra, which is based upon a tenfold division. And like I said, this is this is um, the the sixfold division is very simple, right? You draw a circle and then you simply walk the compass around it six times. This is a little more complicated. It, revol it involves additional steps to accomplish the tenfold division. But nature has utilized this in, on many levels. And one of the most elegant is how um, this defines for us the geometry of the DNA molecule. In cross-section, we can see the same tenfold geometry. This is, like I said, a computer-generated cross-section of the uh, DNA molecule. So um, that, to me, is a rare, very beautiful manifestation of the tenfold, which, of course, is based first upon the fivefold division. And we can uh, hopefully look at that um, with some slides that will be coming up as far as... Um, and so all of the chakras are have their geometric correlates, um, which I think would be beyond our discussion today, but it gives the, the listener kind of an idea that geometry was so intrinsic to many systems, both spiritual systems and meditation systems, as well as, um, you know, ex art and architecture and, and things like that. Because one of the things, particularly, I think, um, you know, in the Eastern system, it might be the idea of karma yoga in the Western systems of, of spirituality, there was a belief that one could attain spiritual liberation through one's work. Um, and if one's work was ritualized and it, it became symbolical for a larger process of, of spiritual enlightenment, um, through one's work of, of building, of creating something, um, one could obtain a, a higher state of consciousness. And I think that that is probably true. It bears out, you know, in, in the field, I think, when when you actually have that mindset that you're creating something that is unique and something that resonates with with higher principles. Because that's the idea, because you're looking for this resonance, which if things have the proper proportions between them, the proper ratios, then they resonate, right? Um, it's like the idea of a, if you have two tuning forks and they are um, to, in tune with one another, you can vibrate one and the other one on across the room will set up a sympath sympathetic vibration, right? And I think this is the idea that they're trying to create a structure out of material that <clears throat> is harmonically proportioned to pre-existing patterns of energy in nature, you see. Um, and so, same whether, whether it's a three-dimensional, um, whether it was a work of architecture, whether it was a work of art, whether it was, um, you know, a, a rug that was being woven that would have the proportions in there, or a tile pattern on a mosque. <clears throat> it was the same idea. If you did a tile pattern on a wall on a mosque, the idea was that inherent in that tile pattern was a geometric module that was also found in the whole pattern, the whole complex of the structure as well. The idea again being that the part and the whole are reflections of one another. So those symmetrical measurements created a sense of resonance? Yes, somehow. yes. And also the idea that, you know, we ourselves are embodiments of geometry. The human anatomy is based on the fivefold geometry and the geometry of the golden section, you know, which is <clears throat> basically tells us that if we have any, any straight line, and we divide that line, <clears throat> we can, we'll create two parts. If we cut it in the middle, each part is the same size, and that is not a dynamic situation. It's a static situation where it's in perfect balance. But if we begin to move that dividing line, the two parts are asymmetrical. They're, they are no longer the same size. But in the golden section, or the divine proportion, we're looking for that one magic point where the ratio of the small section is to the large section exactly as the large section is to the whole line. You see that? So as this is to this, this is to the whole line. And that is the fundamental proportion of the human anatomy. If you take a person and they're standing vertically and you take that golden section division, um, you'll find that 
is to, if they're standing vertically, the golden section division will define the position of their navel, right? Now, when a human is born, you do not conform to the golden section. A baby, for example, will have their navel in the middle of their body. As you grow, you grow into this proportion. Another place that's found very prominently within the human body is the cubit, so elbow to fingertip, right? And where you then would divide that in the golden section gives you your wrist joint. So the cubit, here this would be the, the cubit, which is the forearm. Cubitus is Latin for um, forearm, elbow to fingertip. Then you, there's a space. Anybody watching this can feel on their wrist there will be a space. It's called the space of desktop. And there's a little hole in your wrist that really marks that division so that this is to this as that is to the whole forearm. And if you take your forearm like this and enlarge it to your full height, that space of desktop there will be your navel. And if you take that proportion and you make a rectangle out of it, that defines the shape of the human face. And it, and it goes, I mean, there are dozens and dozens of manifestations of the golden section in the human anatomy, but found all throughout the natural order. You find it in animals, you find it in plants. Um, and there's, a, there's a famous sequence that's based upon that. It's called the Fibonacci sequence.